This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, April the 1st, 2019. It's April Fool's Day, and almost no one has a good reason as to why. At least, not the April part. The Fool's part is probably associated in some way with the medieval French Festival of Fools, but that was likely celebrated much earlier in the year. Some folks believe that the timing comes from the Canterbury Tales, of all things. Chaucer's Nun's Priest tale, which features the cocky rooster Chanticleer, has the fox tricking him on the 32nd day of March, which would be April the 1st. But scholars believe that that's probably a copying error because the other texts have 32 days after March rather than the 32nd day of March, which would be May the 2nd. So no one really knows why we prank each other and tell tall tales on April Fool's Day at the beginning of April, but we do, so it is. Today in 1960, the Tyros-1 satellite transmitted the very first television picture from space. It seemed very much like science fiction to most of the American populace. The Television Infrared Observation Satellite 1 was an early weather satellite launched by the U.S. It was equipped with a few types of cameras and was able to send what we would consider today very low-resolution pictures of Earth via satellite signal. At the time, it was at the edge of magic. It was a joint venture of several governmental agencies, including NASA, and like so many projects at the time, It was partly what it claimed to be, and partly a spy satellite, an important part of the Cold War intelligence gathering program. The Cold War in space. (laughs) I wonder how you say April Fool's Day in Russian. Well, today in 1873 was the birthday of Sergei Rachmaninov, who would have known how to say April Fool's in Russian. He was born in Novgorod and was immediately apparent to everyone that he was going to be something special. Rachmaninoff was playing the piano from sheet music before his fifth birthday. His parents were both musically inclined, and he was born to the Russian aristocracy, which meant the best tutors and the most prized opportunities. Still, Rachmaninoff is something special. He's firmly in the late Romantic period of musical composition, and yet his style is distinctly Russian. Musically, he wasn't exactly prolific, but he kept busy throughout his long life. He wrote a lot of distinct pieces. And when the Bolshevik Revolution shook Russia, the Rachmaninovs got out and ended up in New York City. Sergei earned his living by performance and conducting rather than by composition. He published a good number of excellent concertos and symphonies, which blend that weighty Teutonic bass register with an almost sing-song upper register, which gives him a very distinct sound and feel. His own virtuosity on piano allowed him to feature some notably challenging piano compositions. He's perhaps best known for his great religious work, The Vespers, which takes a lot of that deep Slavonic chant from the Russian Orthodox tradition and accompanies them at times with a full orchestra and at times with a chamber orchestra. Finally, the month of April is traditionally devoted to the Most Holy Eucharist. It's a time to reflect upon the mystery of the Eucharist, upon the various Eucharistic miracles in history, and upon our own reception of Holy Communion. Now, the practice of devoting a day each week, like Sunday in honor of the Resurrection, or Fridays in honor of the Crucifixion, or a day each month, like First Friday, First Saturday, or a month each year, like April for the Holy Eucharist or October for the Holy Rosary, that idea is very old. Each of these devotions has its own story and its own value. Some have indulgences or promises attached, like praying the Rosary. Some are divine law, like keeping holy the Lord's Day. As far as what the specific devotions look like, there are regional traditions and there are historic references. If this is new to you, perhaps just take some time this month to look up a few Eucharistic miracles online and maybe read a short book on the Eucharist. St. John Vianney has a few that are wonderful. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.